San Diego, California, and we are at ACC 2015. You know, the promise of precision medicine has been just that for some time. It has been a promise, largely unfulfilled, but there are some really interesting advances, and there's a particular new study that I'd like to talk about. And so I am with uh, two folks here. One is uh, the CEO, Tassos Janakakos, who is of Myocardia, and your CMO, Chief Medical Officer, Jonathan Fox, who is an MD and a PhD, and thank you very much. You, We're talking here at the first therapy to target the genetic mutation that is the underlying cause of cardiomyopathy. Let's start at the beginning. Why is it so important to come up with something like this? Thanks for having us, Rick. It's really important that people recognize this is a 50-year-old disease originally described by some luminaries in cardiology, and we're still treating it with 40-year-old drugs and with invasive procedures that palliate but don't actually treat the underlying cause of the disease. So what's myocardia, and where are you in terms of finding something? Myocardia is a private biotechnology company. We've been around for about just under three years now with 50 people in research and development, and our focus is in developing targeted therapies that get to the underlying causes of cardiovascular diseases initially focused on the heritable cardiomyopathies. This is our mission. We invest heavily in science as evidenced by our SHARE registry, which is one of the largest patient-based registries with 8,000 cardiomyopathy patients in it, looking to make some fundamental connections between the genetics and the natural history of disease. And we're, of course, driven by developing important transformational therapies for these patients who are really desperate and their families who are desperate for new therapies. And you're targeting something called MYK461? Yes, that's our compound of our lead program for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or HCM. Uh, MYK461 is a small molecule, direct negative modulator of myosin, the motor protein of the heart muscle that converts chemical energy into the contractile force that powers every heartbeat. So where this comes into the cycle pretty early, right, in terms of Absolutely. where you're targeting? Right, because the sarcomere, which is the fundamental underlying functional unit of all striated muscle, is powered by the myosin motor. And the myosin motor it actually takes ATP, the energy molecule, the universal energy molecule, and converts it into the mechanical force of contraction. Now, what's the background in terms of where, how did you get to this point? That's a great question, Rick. Um, our company has four founders that are have formed the foundation of knowledge in this area. John and Cricket Seidman from Harvard Medical School were to the, the first group to describe a family, a French-Canadian family, about 25 years ago, demonstrating that this was an autosomal dominant heritable cardiomyopathy. Our other two founders, Jim Spudich from Stanford University, has been working on the fundamental mechanisms of muscle contraction his entire career, and Leslie Linewan, University of Colorado, similarly a basic scientist with a keen interest in disease mechanisms. Bringing these four people together as the founders of our company provided us with the scientific background to build a discovery and drug development platform to spawn a number of products that are in our pipeline to help people with these heritable cardiomyopathies. And you ready to do a study? We are in fact doing a clinical study with this lead compound, MYK461. We are in the clinic in phase one. What are you looking at I mean, in terms of how many patients and what are you looking at as far as outcome? Sure, well, um, like any phase one study, you know, you start small, you start with a single ascending dose, it's basically a safety and tolerability study measuring pharmacokinetics, how much of the blood makes it into the bloodstream per dose. And we're looking at healthy volunteers, but we're also doing in parallel HCM patients who are clinically stable and willing to participate in such a study. I mean, that's why the share registry is really important because you have access to all of these individuals, correct? That's right. That's right. It's a collaboration with eight leading cardiomyopathy centers, four in the U.S. and four in Europe. And within those centers, the registry allows us to look for the patients with the right inclusion and exclusion criteria and understand how many of them are at each of these eight sites and it does facilitate enrollment. Assuming that things are positive and they start to progress, what kind of a calendar are you looking at? Yeah, this study that Jonathan referred to is our first with MYK461 and in addition to its core goal of assessing safety and tolerability of the drug candidate, we will also get some initial signals on what it's doing to contractility as measured by echo and things like ejection fraction. So at the end of the year, when we expect to announce the results from this study, it will help us verify whether we're hitting the target that the drug was designed to hit and whether the mechanism 
is translating from our non-clinical work. Uh, from that point forward, we'll be doing more phase two studies in patients with different specific genetic drivers of disease as well as different phenotypic disease. For example, folks that have an obstruction and other folks without an obstruction who have reduced cardiopulmonary exercise capability. And those will be happening as we move into 2016. Now, if this works as planned, how is it going to eventually be used? What do you think in the future this might So because we are targeting the fundamental mechanism, the mutations that cause HCM work at the level of the sarcomere by intervening at that first step, there is at least the possibility that this could be a true disease modifying agent. It's important to recognize the drugs that are used today, they're used off-label, they're used as palliative care, essentially aimed at reducing symptoms, but they don't target the fundamental mechanism of the disease. So we believe that at least there's the, there's the hope that our compound, by intervening in this very topmost level of the cascade of events, that, that we may be able to affect the remodeling that characterizes the disease. Sometimes it's after that cascade of events before you detect and it's diagnosed. Right. So what would you be looking for? Genetic markers for individual patients who now, you might... You know, one of, the, one, of the, the, one of the advantages of working in cardiology and being able to build your science on the, on the foundation that already exists is you look all around you in cardiology. What is one of the shining stars of our field is our imaging capabilities oh, and, yeah. our, and our ability to assess functional uh, outcomes through imaging and to be able to track that in vivo, in intact humans, non-invasively. So we plan to access, access the entire range of imaging capabilities in order to show that we are affecting diastolic dysfunction, that we are reducing the hypercontractility that, that uh, characterizes this disease. And both of those things, the diastolic dysfunction, the stiffness of the left ventricle, as well as the hypercontractility, they're energy hogs. That big, thick left ventricle oh, yeah. actually results in a heart that is chronically starved for oxygen. So the prediction, and we need to measure this, we need to test this, the prediction is that we will reduce energy consumption in these diseased hearts as well. Wow. So outside of this particular field that we're talking about, what else is myocardia interested in studying at the moment? Well, right now we're getting very deep in understanding the disease drivers for cardiomyopathies in general that are heritable. So that includes hypertrophic cardiomyopathy for which MYK461 is designed for, as well as dilated cardiomyopathy. So look for us to advance a candidate there in clinical development next year around dilated cardiomyopathy. As the field begins to understand genetic and other molecular drivers of cardiovascular diseases, which up until now we've thought of as heterogeneous diseases of, that are a, a, a combination of different ailments, we can now segregate those and isolate their molecular drivers. You'll see companies like us focus on designing therapies specifically aimed at correcting or offsetting that effect. One of the great things about our approach here and the precision medicine approach in general is, as Jonathan mentioned, very early biomarker-based or imaging-based readouts of safety and efficacy with a far smaller trial size. So we don't expect outcome studies, which take four or five years and have tens of thousands of patients in phase three, and that's just good news for patients and their families. As I said at the opening, it's all been promised for so far, but it really looks like we're starting to get there. We may I, not have arrived yet, but are we getting no, there? I believe so, and, and one thing to keep in mind, Rick, is that we are targeting a, a, stru a biological structure and a functional structure, a mechanism, that is so highly conserved across evolution that as opposed to many other drug development programs that rely on animal models and animal data to make imperfect predictions as to what might happen in the clinic, the heart, the mammalian heart is the mammalian heart in many ways. There are, of course, species differences that we have to take into account, but it allows us to make some mechanistic predictions at least, gives us testable hypotheses that give us the confidence that we're on the right path. This is exciting. Congratulations, first off, and I hope this goes very well. We have a variety of uh, issues that we're going to be looking at ahead in CardioSource World News, and precision medicine like this is exactly one of them. So please check out CardioSource World News, where I am executive editor Rick McGuire.